When I'm browsing through YouTube, I often see that videos titled Why am I tired all the time are getting millions of views. The same with Google Trends. The search queries for why am I tired all the time have been increasing linearly since the early 2000s. It feels like more and more people are feeling tired all the time and they don't know the reason for that. In this video, I'm not going to tell you just sleep a little bit more and work less because that's obviously what most people have already tried. Instead, I'm going to dive deep into the root causes of low energy and how to fix the root causes of fatigue. First, we have to understand what is energy and how does your body make it. Energy on a biochemical level is in the form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP. ATP is the energy the currency of life without which you will die. Think of it as the fuel in your gas tank. If ATP is low, you feel tired and without ATP, you can't drive. ATP is produced in a series of reactions inside a mitochondria, which are called the powerhouse of the cell. Every cell has its own mitochondria that are constantly producing and recycling ATP to keep you alive. The problem begins when your mitochondria are inefficient at producing energy, or they've become dysfunctional due to aging, environmental damage, a poor lifestyle, or some chronic disease such as diabetes, neurodegeneration, or cancer. The result is poor mitochondrial function and low ATP production, which manifests itself in the form of fatigue or some disease. So how do you improve your mitochondrial function? There are three steps. Number one, increase the number of mitochondria through mitochondrial biogenesis. Number two, increase mitochondrial efficiency or how much energy you can produce from each mitochondrion. And number three, quality control the dead and worn out mitochondria through autophagy. For mitochondrial biogenesis, you need to activate key pathways that initiate the process, such as PGC1-alpha, CERT1, AMPK, TFAM or mitochondrial transcription factor A and NRF2. We'll be talking about AMPK and CERT1 later in the context of NAD, but essentially exercise is the most potent way to increase mitochondrial biogenesis because it targets all these pathways, especially high intensity interval training because it stimulates energy stress, which activates AMPK and signals the requirement for more energy. Paradoxically, exercising regularly will increase your energy and you'll feel less tired during the daytime. That's because your mitochondria are working more efficiently and you have more mitochondria to begin with. Your body doesn't produce more mitochondria if it doesn't feel the need that it needs to do that. Exercise also increases NAD production, which we'll talk about later. Most people in today's world just don't move enough. If you spend all day sitting and not moving, you'll inevitably feel tired because the body doesn't have enough mitochondria. A 2022 meta-analysis saw that high-intensity interval training for 12 weeks at 90-95% to of max heart rate interspersed with 50-70% to heart rate was most effective for increasing PGC1-alpha and TFAM. Resistance training also increased TFAM, but the effects on PGC1-alpha were inconsistent. Moderate-intensity aerobic training had no consistent effects on PGC1-alpha. However, low and moderate intensity aerobic exercise is superior for mitochondrial density and efficiency. You're able to produce more energy from the same amount of mitochondria. That's because low intensity aerobic training utilizes slow twitch muscle fibers that rely on aerobic metabolism as the mitochondria produce energy in the presence of oxygen. You also need certain key nutrients from food to keep the mitochondria going. The mitochondrial electron transport chain that produces ATP has five complexes and each of these complexes requires specific nutrients to function. For example, complex 1 requires CoQ10, vitamin E, taurine, selenium and B12, whereas complex 4 requires copper, iron, selenium, vitamin E and magnesium. The final step of ATP production in the ATP synthase requires calcium and magnesium. So if you're deficient in one of these vitamins or minerals, your energy production will be impaired or severely reduced. Here's a short cheat sheet of the foods you get these nutrients from. Taurine, fish, meat, sea vegetables. Selenium, organ meat, seafood or nuts and seeds. CoQ10, organ meat like heart and fish. Magnesium, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, nuts, leafy greens. Calcium, dairy, tofu, leafy greens and bones. Vitamin E, nuts and seeds. Copper, dark chocolate, cacao and liver. B12, meat, nutritional yeast and fermented foods with live probiotics. There are some situations where the mitochondria are broken because of cyanide poisoning, some environmental toxin or because of a health condition such as neurodegeneration, diabetes or cancer. 
In these kind of situations, doctors often use methylene blue to support energy production. You see, methylene blue is an alternative electron donor, and it bypasses the mitochondrial complex 1 and 3, which helps the mitochondria to produce energy during mitochondrial dysfunction, when one of the complexes is broken. I've taken methylene blue before and I didn't notice an effect because my mitochondria are already working optimally. But methylene blue might come in handy as a short-term band-aid to support energy production when one of these mitochondrial complexes isn't working. To keep your mitochondrial population healthy, you need to remove the old and worn out mitochondria because they're going to spread inflammation and oxidative distress, which leads to chronic disease. This is where autophagy comes in play, especially mitochondrial autophagy called mitophagy. Mitophagy engulfs these broken mitochondria and maintains a healthier ecosystem. So how do you increase mitophagy? No surprise, exercise is one of the best and fastest ways to increase mitophagy. It activates AMPK, which is a key sensor for the initiation of autophagy. Other methods of increasing mitophagy include weight loss, calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, sauna, cold exposure, as well as dietary phytonutrients and polyphenols, such as the ones in coffee, green tea, vegetables, berries, olive oil, nuts, seeds, and bitter herbs and spices like curcumin and ginger. With age, mitophagy activity declines, which is also the reasons you see an accumulation of old broken mitochondria with age. One of the things that interferes with mitophagy is lipofuscin, which is an age-related pigment that causes oxidative stress and impairs mitochondrial function. Insufficient autophagy also results in greater lipofuscin accumulation, so it's a vicious cycle of junk accumulation inside the cells. Visually, lipofuscin often manifests as liver spots and age-related spots because lipofuscin is full of iron. That iron promotes cell senescence that turns healthy cells into zombie cells. Thus, high iron levels in the blood promote aging through lipofuscin accumulation and chronic inflammation. However, you need a certain amount of iron to avoid iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common nutrient deficiency in the world that affects predominantly young women because of their menstruation. Low iron levels in the blood result in low hemoglobin, which is what carries oxygen around the body. With low oxygen levels, you feel tired and you get winded very easily. Iron deficiency anemia isn't always because of low iron levels. It's more often than not because of low copper. Ceruloplasmin is a copper-carrying protein that increases iron absorption and iron transportation. You get iron from red meat and leafy greens, but you get copper from liver and dark chocolate and beans. So it's important to eat a diverse diet. Most men don't need extra iron and they're not low in iron either because of not menstruating. Men might actually need to lower their iron levels with blood donation or iron gelation because high iron levels are associated with heart disease and accelerated aging. But women are more commonly deficient in iron and copper because of menstruation. I want to take a quick break to let you know that my school community with me and my wife is now live. It's called U-SPAN Society and it teaches you how to look and feel younger. Both me and Inka have reached top 1% of health with our biomarkers and we can teach you to accomplish the same because we've already coached over 500 individuals. Here's what's inside our school community. 12 plus hours of video content about reversing signs of aging and becoming healthier. We're adding new content every week and every month. Video courses on nutrition, skincare, fitness, sleep, biomarkers and much more. New courses are added every month. Bi-weekly live Q&A calls with us where we answer your questions about your U-SPAN journey. An in-depth overview of our own health protocols that help us to reach top 1% health. Community posts and discussions where you can get feedback and help regarding your progress. Full workout plans and meal plans that are updated regularly. Step-by-step -step walkthroughs of workouts, skincare, nutrition and daily routines. And a WhatsApp group for daily tips and inspiration. All of this for $1 per day and even less than that with the annual plan. Check out the link in the description or search for Youthspan Society on school.com. School with a K. One of the main cofactors of ATP production is NAD, or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. NAD is a coenzyme found in all living cells and it's needed for energy production, DNA repair, DNA methylation, antioxidant defense, metabolizing food, and genome maintenance. Again, without NAD, you would die. Low NAD levels are implicated in many chronic diseases and all the hallmarks of aging, such as DNA damage, mitochondrial dysfunction, stem cell exhaustion, and cell senescence. Pretty much everything that makes you feel more tired, sicker, and ages you. Now, taking NAD supplements like NMN and NR will increase your NAD levels and it can give you short-term energy. But this is where most people's awareness about NAD ends. Taking NAD supplements doesn't fix the root cause of why you have low NAD levels and why you feel tired. 
NAD is produced via three main pathways, all of which work slightly differently. You have the price handler pathway that converts nicotinic acid from food to NAMN and then to NAD. You also have the de novo biosynthesis pathway that converts tryptophan from food to NAD as well. However, these two pathways make up a minority of your total daily NAD production because all of the NAD you produce, whether via the price handler or the de novo biosynthesis pathway, will be directed into the salvage pathway that recycles NAD. When NAD is used to deal with inflammation, DNA damage or energy production, it gets converted into niacinamide. Niacinamide gets converted into nicotinamide mononucleotide or NMN via an enzyme called NAMPT. Then NMN gets converted back into NAD via NMNAT. That NAD then goes back into the salvage pathway to be recycled. Supplementing with NMN or NR means that while they do raise NAD, you need to have the salvage pathway working properly to sustain high NAD levels via the NAMPT enzyme. NAMPT is the rate limiting step in the NAD salvage pathway, which means that it's the bottleneck in how much NAD gets produced every day. The salvage pathway is responsible for the vast majority of your daily NAD production. It means that to have long-term sustainable energy all throughout the day without needing to take stimulants or without needing to eat, you need to be able to recycle your energy properly, and your body is able to do that very efficiently. NAMPT activity is dependent on three things. The presence of niacinamide, AMPK activation, and circadian rhythm alignment through CERT1 expression. Niacinamide is produced from NAD metabolism itself, but you can also supplement with it or get it from food. AMPK gets activated during physiological stress, such as exercise, calorie restriction, or intermittent fasting. It's what signals the body the need to increase NAD production. When it comes to the type of exercise, then low-intensity cardiovascular exercise increases NAD production the most. Low-intensity aerobic exercise also increases mitochondrial function and increases your energy production. Exercising close to failure and at very high intensities for too long actually lowers NAD levels, which is why overtraining makes you feel more tired. CERT1 gets expressed with proper circadian rhythm alignment, meaning that you need to have a diurnal daily rhythm, wake up in the morning with the sun and go to bed before midnight and sleep in pitch black darkness. The most critical component of NAD recycling is circadian rhythm alignment, because NAMPT, the bottleneck in how much NAD gets produced, is dependent of CERT1 expression, the protein that governs circadian rhythm regulation. This is the reason why shift work and circadian rhythm misalignment are associated with many chronic diseases, as well as fatigue, even when you sleep 7-8 to eight hours and are otherwise healthy. The circadian disruption derails NAD production. I'll talk about sleep and circadian rhythms in just a bit, but I want to finish with NAD supplements. There are three main forms of NAD supplements you could take to increase NAD. NMN, NR, and niacinamide or niacin. All of these supplements work and they all will raise NAD levels. It's been shown to do that. However, NMN or NR don't fix the salvage pathway. They do raise NAD levels in the short term, but to be able to recycle that energy, you need to have the salvage pathway working properly. That's why I think if you take an NAD supplement, then niacinamide or niacin are much better and more suitable for long-term NAD production. But the key component here is still circadian rhythm alignment. Alright, let's now talk about sleep and circadian rhythms. Because let's be honest, if you sleep just 4 hours a night, then chances are you will feel tired. But it also matters when you sleep and how you have your circadian rhythms aligned. Because as I just shared with you, circadian alignment is the key component to NAD recycling. So how do you achieve the circadian rhythm alignment? It's actually quite easy. You wake up in the morning when the sun is still rising and you get exposed to bright daylight immediately upon waking. And number two, you go to bed before midnight and sleep in darkness while blocking out artificial blue light before bed that disrupts your circadian rhythms. The main circadian rhythm you want to keep in mind is the cortisol and melatonin diurnal rhythm. Cortisol rises in the morning to wake you up and increase your energy. Many people associate cortisol with stress and something bad, but the truth is that if you don't produce enough cortisol in the morning, you're going to feel tired, and it's also associated with diabetes and insulin resistance. Melatonin rises in the evening to make you fall asleep and govern antioxidant defense, including mitophagy in your sleep. Yes, there are individual including genetic differences between people's chronotypes. Some people are more morning larks and others are night owls. However, in the modern world, we're exposed to artificial light at night and you can easily offset your natural circadian rhythm. If you go to bed at 3 a.m. and wake up at 11 a.m., it's not optimal for your circadian rhythm. Most people aren't actually night owls. They just have a messed up circadian rhythm because of looking at screens and blue light at night. If your circadian rhythms are synchronized, then everything in your body works like clockwork. Your hormones and sleep-wake-on-the-cycles are in sync, 
and you have a lower risk of diabetes and other diseases. When you get exposed to blue light before bed, you experience circadian disruption that makes everything in your body out of sync. That's why you feel tired in the morning and energized before bed. The circadian rhythm is flipped. The proper human circadian rhythm is that we get exposed to bright lights in the morning. We're physically active during the day, we eat our food during the day, and we block out artificial light before bed and sleep in complete darkness. Eating at night, exercising at night, and being exposed to artificial light at night causes circadian misalignment. Circadian rhythm misalignment is a big reason people feel tired in the morning and during the day. They're not producing enough cortisol in the morning and their hormones are out of sync. With proper circadian rhythm alignment, you will feel energized in the morning because your body produces enough cortisol and you can go throughout the day without needing stimulants because your body is recycling its NAD all the time. It's important to realize that sleep is what resets your fatigue. During the day, you accumulate what's called sleep pressure that makes you want to fall asleep. It should be low in the morning and high before bed. During sleep deprivation, sleep pressure keeps rising, making you more tired. But sleep pressure can also be high in the morning because you didn't get enough quality sleep. Sometimes you just need to sleep longer. If 7 hours isn't enough, sleep for 8 and see what happens. The molecule in the brain that makes you feel tired is called adenosine. Caffeine works by blocking adenosine receptors in the brain, masking the feeling of tiredness. You're actually not untired, but your brain just hides the feeling of tiredness. You can still drink coffee if you like because coffee polyphenols can support mitophagy and they can also support NAD recycling. The problem is when you are dependent of coffee and when caffeine starts to interfere with your sleep. The half-life of caffeine is 6 hours, which means it can stay in your system 24-7 if you drink several cups of coffee a day, especially in the afternoon. Some people are also genetically very slow metabolizers of caffeine, so they need to be especially careful with this. Generally, keep your caffeine consumption before 2 p.m. to not interfere with your sleep. But fast metabolizers might be able to drink coffee even in the evening and still fall asleep fine. Alright, I've gone through a lot. I'm gonna now give you a practical and easier to understand plan. Sleep is the reset button that clears out fatigue and makes you feel refreshed in the morning. For good sleep, you need to sleep 7-8 to eight hours, but some people feel fine with even 6 hours. To sleep well, you need to respect the natural circadian rhythm of the human body. Bright light in the morning, block blue light before bed, and sleep in darkness. Get exposed to sunlight during the day, exercise, and stop eating a few hours before bed to keep your circadian rhythms aligned. Circadian rhythm alignment is key to NAD recycling, which would enable your body to produce its own energy. Time-restricted eating and stopping food consumption 3-4 to four hours before bed is a big component of this as well. But just sleeping isn't enough. You also need to have your mitochondria working properly. Engage in physical exercise regularly. I recommend at minimum 2 resistance training workouts per week and 1 aerobic workout per week. Overtraining and training for several hours will lower your energy by depleting your NAD stores. If your recycling pathway isn't working well, you'll be in a severe NAD deficit. Time-restricted eating is beneficial for mitochondrial health by increasing mitochondrial density and mitophagy that eliminates old worn-out mitochondria. You also need to be eating a high-quality diet to ensure you get the nutrients needed for ATP production, such as magnesium, iron, calcium, taurine, selenium, vitamin E, and CoQ10. Dietary polyphenols, such as the one in olive oil, vegetables, berries, and tea are what also support mitophagy as well as NAD recycling. When all of these things are covered, one last key missing element that a lot of people miss is having a purpose and a reason to be alive. It's this internal spark or internal motivation that can keep you going even if you didn't sleep, even if you ate a nutrient deficient diet, and even if your circadian rhythms were completely misaligned. Having a strong willpower and motivation can override all of these things, but it's obviously healthier and easier for you to be energized if you follow these recommendations that are listed in this video. If you're ready to get to the top 1% of health, then join our school community. Link in the description.